How's it going, everybody? Rob right here today, and we are back with our Hot 23 No Money Spent Road to Glory, the Road to Bread, here in episode number 33. And I figured I'd give you guys a full episode of just a team update, show you where we're at, show you how many coins we have, maybe the plan moving forward, as well as checking out some of the stats and some of the some of the collection here. So, um, uh, the the rewards for this week's Hut Champs and Rivals and Squad Battles and stuff, that should be coming on Saturday of this week. So um, if you're watching this as soon as it drops, just know that we're going to get rewards in a little bit. I'm hoping hoping they drop a, a next-gen Owen Power on Friday. If they don't, I don't know what we're gonna what our plan is, but, you know, I really want that. Um, you know, I think it'd, be, it'd, think it'd be great. So over the weekend, guys, we ended up finishing with six wins in Hot Champs. I probably should have played a couple games, but again, like I said in the last one, I was just a little too blech. I wasn't feeling it right. I'd rather do other things. Uh, but we finished six three and one, which overall is a pretty darn good record. I was pretty happy with it, and I feel like I am improving as along with the team. Uh, I got a couple squad medals I need to play uh, before the end of this week, just so we can get those rewards in the rewards episode on Saturday. Uh, without further ado, let's show you the lines and talk about some of our cards and talk about what I have enjoyed and. Uh, and we, there's no better place to start than Connor McDavid here. He's got buzzing gladiator and applesauce. Although, you know, we have so many gladiators active. It's crazy. Uh, and I decided to activate his wheels, close quarters, and elite edges. Close quarters is insane, and elite edges is amazing, right? Uh, but you guys can see with buzzing active, he gets a plus one speed. So he's got 98 speed uh, with 94 endurance, the 99 wrist shot accuracy, and 93 wrist shot power, 99 deking, 99 hand to eye, 99 passing. And by the way, he's still got room to grow. He's not even at a 99 yet. They can still give him boost cards. And those are all going to come our way um, uh, whenever we want. Uh, but I, yeah, I feel like I finally started to learn how to play with his card. The cards around him, they're solid, but they're clearly not his tier. And I mean, honestly, there's very few cards that are the tier of uh, Team of the Year McDavid. Uh, but this Nino Wiener Rider has been pretty solid for us. Um, he feels a little chunkier. I mean, he is 6'2", 218, but he does not feel like the super snappy, super zippy card. Uh, Tevu Teravina feels like a fantastic two-way forward. I know he's a playmaker, but there's something about his defense. Uh, maybe it's the awareness. Blah, I don't know. He just makes plays. He can hit a little bit too. 86 strength, 81 body checking with Gladiator active, but a well-rounded card. Ideally, these two guys would be on our second line. And on our second line, you guys should see a new face. I did re-roll Kane. Hedman and Theodore, or, or excuse me, Stamkos, Hedman and Theodore, and we got uh, Kaprizov, Kane, and Barkov. So I went with Kane and decided to get him up to his base tier here. He gets Fly of the Zone and Applesauce. You guys can see he looks really sick. His skating is out of this world with 92 agility, 93 excel, and 92 speed thanks to Fly of the Zone. Um, you can see his shot at the 95 wrist shot accuracy. The power is not the best, but the accuracy is phenomenal. His hands are, are absolutely, absurdly nutty. Uh, 94 deking, 97 offensive awareness, and 92 passing with 92 puck control. Uh, obviously, the defense is not why we have him, but 91 defensive awareness with uh, uh, fly the zone and 87 stick checking means I think he's a prime candidate to be bumped up to that top line uh, should we see fit. Pulling this Kent Nilsson out of my uh, one of my packs, I think I pulled it out of like a Rivals pack from last week's rewards, which I didn't record because um, it just there was one pack and I didn't assume I was getting anything. I pulled Kent Nilsson, and honestly, this guy has really solidified our second line center. Right, he's got 90 speed thanks to fly the zone. His shots all in the 90s, low 90s, but still in the 90s. Uh, and his hands, his hands are solid again. 97 offense awareness certainly helps. And the checking and defense, guys, he is the perfect two-way forward. I have his ankle breaker active as well because I love ankle breaker. Not only does it work on the backhand forehand, but it also works on any kind of deke I, I may do with the loose puck deke. And then we got Dylan Larkin here. Now, we have three power-up collectibles or excuse me, uh, two champs, or maybe two or three champs rewards coming this week, collectibles. Um, so I may end up getting Larkin up to an 89. As you guys can see, I've got 50K. I am trying to flip a card on the market. I will show you that in some of my recent flips. Um, in just in just a second, but I'm probably gonna spend 50K to get Larkin to an 87. Use two of my three power-up collectibles to get him up to an 88. And then to get him up to an 89, we just need to do like a power-up collectibles trade-in set. That should be easy enough. And we get him up to an 89, which he'd have 95 speed. His shot would still be not the best, uh, but his hands are off the charts. 
Uh, and his checking and defense are honestly so solid. Uh, he's 6'1", 198 as well. I mean, obviously, I'd love to get him up to a 92 where he's just kind of b absurdly good um, everywhere. Uh, he'd get Gladiator 2 at Tier 11, but I don't know if I'm going to get him up to Tier 11 anytime soon. But you guys can see, if, so if we get him up to an 87 and then use our power-up collectibles here to get him up to an 89... Uh, the shot is is good. It's not fantastic, but I think he would replace Terra Vine and at least on that top line. Uh, we need a little bit more speed, I think, on that top line. I think I think that's what we're kind of lacking, right? 91 speed is not bad. It's certainly usable. Uh, and 90 speed is, is certainly fine. But on the second line, we've got so much speed not on the wings with 92 Kane uh, and then a potential 95 in Dylan Larkin here. So having that next to McDavid, I feel like would give us that elite winger that we could uh, definitely need. I don't know. You guys, obviously this whole video, you guys let me know your thoughts on the team and any suggestions you have. I'll take them uh, into consideration. Uh, Debrinkat, who's been a staple since we started this series uh, is now down on the third line. I wanted to give Patrick Kane the opportunity to thrive, uh, and he just felt like too good of a player to help bolster that third line, right? We had Stamkos here before, who felt solid, but felt like he needed to be carried by some better cards. Uh, McKinnon has been phenomenal. He's perfect for the third line. He looks fantastic. I mean, obviously, he hit, actually hits so darn well. It's actually surprising, but I can't believe we pulled this untradeable Nathan McKinnon. Uh, and he's been he he's going to be a staple of the third line at least until we get his X factor if we do, um, and then I'm going to obviously move him up here because he deserves it. But um, this Debrinkat card, guys, ever since the beginning of the year, we don't I don't want to use the 50k at this point of the year. It's not worth it, and it's not worth it to get the um, the spotlight collectibles. We don't have any. I'd sometimes check just to make sure I didn't forget I had like three in the in the in the collection. But you guys can see his hands are great, his shot is great. He's like a He's like a less good Patrick Kane, uh, if you will. Like, he's not quite as elite as Patty Kane, but he's still a top quality card. And then I picked up this uh, Matthew Bartzell. He's got applesauce and he's got 93 skating. Again, I just kind of wanted a speedy, shifty guy for the third line that I could afford. I believe I picked him up for like 20-ish K. Um, he's got that 93 speed. The shot is not the best, but the hands are great. So really one of those guys you're going to get in tight with. Checking and defense, not the best, but when you're facing opponent's third lines and you're using your third line, generally, um, he's going to do the, uh, a great job. And then on our fourth line, we got some guys for synergy here uh, in Evgeny Kuznetsov. And then Zabenejad, honestly, he was phenomenal when we first got him, but, um, you know, he just hasn't. He hasn't really done it for me. We need five milestone collectibles. We have zero to even upgrade him to an 87. I mean, he's a card that I'm not going to downgrade, right? I could turn him in, though, at some point, I think, as an 86. I think you can do that. Um, and we could probably get collectibles for him for something uh, and then replace him. But he was great when we first got him. He popped off immediately. But ever since he's kind of... I don't know. His high 80s were no we're no longer in that time of the year. Uh, Kuznetsov again here for the fly of the zone and 92 speed. He's he's fine. He can keep up with everybody. His hands aren't the best and his shooting's not the best, but he has scored a couple goals for us and has made a couple nice plays. So as a fourth liner, I can't really complain. And then the Kevin Fiala that we pulled from that awesome live stream pack opening. Um, I, I wanted to sell him at one point. I was like, you know, I'm done with this guy. Uh, he was garbage. He felt like garbage. And then I don't know. I'm now playing him in a different spot and a different mindset with him. And he's really turned it around. You can see again, the card is probably that about a month or so ago, maybe six weeks ago, he would have been an elite card. Now he's just kind of, you know, an average card. But that is the forward core. I'm not really sure what else to upgrade here other than using our coins and our collectibles and our hut champs uh, rewards uh, to get Kane and Larkin upgraded. Everybody else, there's no other X factors to upgrade. Those are our only two X factors on the team, uh, which I'm pretty happy with. Take a look at the defense. There's the Rasmus Dahlin I picked up for about 59k. Uh, I picked up the Tage Thompson and then uh, turn him in Rasmus Dahlin before uh, All-Star Weekend. Um, and Dahlin did score the goal. He missed the penalty shot where he tried that sick behind both legs um, shot. And then he got one on the one-timer just with seconds to go uh, in, in the entire weekend. So very happy that he actually got bumped up to an 88 because he looks... Pretty solid all around for a defenseman. I'm very happy he's got great hands. And then we also pulled this Adam Fox. Now, we could end up selling this Adam Fox, but he's got truculence. He's got 92 speed. He's got 96 checking or strength, 97 body checking with 98 shot blocking, 90. I mean, guys, he is a he's a beast. Defensively, 
he's an absolute shutdown maniac uh, on the blue line. So he's the last guy I think I'd want to sell. One guy that I would consider selling though is probably this Aaron Ward. Now I like this card a lot. I do. I got to say, uh, this is one card that when I got it, I was stoked about it. He then kind of faded into obscurity behind Adam Fox after we pulled him. Um, but, you know, he's a card that I don't think I've seen any of them on the market. Um, as a defensive defenseman, it doesn't really matter. But you can see his hands are solid enough. They're not great. Uh, but the checking and defense are good. Uh, the skating's pretty solid. But I feel like for an 88 overall card, if we could turn him into, like, maybe 60K um, and turn, you know, turn that 60K into getting Larkin, uh, or maybe after we get Larkin to an 89, turning the 60K from potentially selling Ward into upgrading Patty Kane to an 87 um, and getting him another, you know, upgrade or two away from a really, really big upgrade there to 88. Um, you know, that could be one of the moves we end up doing here. Chris Letang, the, I, I chose him as my free spotlight guy. I can't be upset about him. It's a free card. Um, <clears throat> I think he's going to be a staple on the blue line for the pretty much majority of the year so far. Um, look at he's got 90 speed. His, his defense is solid. And for a free card that's untradeable, I can't be upset about it. He also gets buzzing and he gets gladiator. So you guys can see gladiator helps him with the body checking a little bit and shot blocking as well as the wrist shot power and endurance. Uh, buzzing helps his speed get to 90, which I think is phenomenal. And then our third pairing is Kale McCarr, who was once on our top pairing. Um, he's still a great card, uh, but base Kale McCarr is okay at this point of the year. The 93 speed is really helpful, and the hands are great, right? But you look at the checking, you look at the shooting. Defense is solid, right? It's good, uh, but the, the hands and the skating are really where he makes his money, and he does that in real life too. But uh, I think for our card here, I think he's fine on the third pairing. And then we have a tradable Victor Hedman that I picked up simply because I wanted to um, uh, upgrade his... his um, X Factor card, and that's a card to me that's got uh, bombarded, and I think we could probably swap him out for uh, Vince Dunn here. We might just bring back in 84 Vince Dunn. He's super solid. He's now got Applesauce Octave 2. That's our seventh Applesauce. You guys can see he's got 87 speed, so better skating than Victor Hedman. Uh, and all around, it's a solid card. I liked him in the few games that we played with him. So I think I might do that and then sell that Victor Hedman just to get a few more coins in the club. Our head coach gets us fly the zone active. And then our goaltender is Markstrom. Uh, you guys have seen Markstrom's been here for a while. Uh, I know team of the year we had to trade in Shostirkin, which I thought was going to be a loss and might... You know, might come back to bite me, but absolutely not. Picking up base marks from has been phenomenal for us. So um, that's been absolutely the right decision. And it looks like, oh, did, did we sell that card or did he just not sell? I think he, yeah, he did not sell. So looking at this, Jason Robertson, I was trying to flip this. I picked him up for 19,000. Um, there, it was him for 19,000 or another. Uh, uh, there were only two of him on the market. One was 19,000. One was like 60,000. Taking a look at him now, you can see this this one's still up for twenty nine thousand. Um, so I'm going to auction him. I think I can, based on on what I paid for him, I've got a little Excel sheet helper here to kind of do the math of how low can I go when selling him. I can go as low as twenty thousand. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to twenty uh, nine fifty and then sell him for twenty one. I'm going to drop the price another thousand. See if somebody will bite on that and we'll put him up for twelve hours. So in the morning. I'll check and see if he's there. Uh, but here you guys can see sold items there. Stamkos. Um, I'm going to actually the the, the glitch uh, with the interface there. But Stamkos, who we I traded in as X-Factor, had to downgrade him. But I flipped this Crosby. I picked him up for like 42. Sold him for 45. That's a couple K. Uh, this Clayton Keller I picked up for, I think, 52. Sold him for 58. Um, I, I bought this Keller a while back because he had Spark and we were trying to get Spark active. Uh, this Elias Pedersen I bought for like... Uh, I think it was like 6,500, 6,000 or something like that. And then I sold him this coin show field. I, I flipped from like 15,000 to 17,000. So they're little things. Uh, it does tie my coins up a little bit though. Uh, but you guys can see here, we'll go here. The Jordan Cairo, I paid like 32,000 for him, th flipped him for 35. Uh, Panarin, I just straight up sold. Zegris, I straight up sold. Base Patrick Kane, I ended up selling for 10,000. I had to buy him back today for more, uh, which sucks. But at the time, I wanted the coins. Uh, I flipped this McDavid. I think I picked him up for like 21 and I sold him for 24. Uh, this Kemper, I think I pulled this Kemper. I sold him for a straight 5,000. Uh, and that's just, is that just the last seven days? Holy smokes. What about the last 30 days? There we go. Shea Theodore, we ended up selling. Huberto, we ended up selling. And then load more items. 
Uh, you guys can see there's Drew Doughty. We flipped this Doucette. I picked up this Tage Thompson just because I wanted to play with the Tage Thompson. He was solid, but I ended up losing about 30K on him because he dropped pretty rapidly. Um, so that does kind of hurt. Uh, but there we go. Those are the cards that I've been flipping and I've been selling. So now let's take a look at what is remaining in the club. Uh, let's take a look at my collection and just search here. I'll show you guys the entire collection and then I'll show you guys the tradable cards. So if you guys can spot any kind of profit to be made, please let me know. But you guys can see here, there's a couple special cards that I no longer use, like this Mike Green here. Uh, let me refund the 7,500 coins. Thank you. Um, and there we go. We're going to get 7,500 back in the account to 36,000 now. Uh, so pretty happy about that. He's down to an 85, which is a bit of a bummer. But here's Rob Blake. Uh, we took him over Phil Housley, which I kind of regret doing now. Is look, even at a 90 overall, Rob Blake, with all of this investment, he still only got 86 speed. Yes, he's a physical beast on the back end and unlocks truculence at three. Um, but just his hand, his hands are surprisingly good. His deking's terrible. Um, but just not a card. I should have taken that Phil Housley for sure. But you guys can see here, these are the most of the cards in the lineup. I don't really have any high-rated cards that are just kind of chilling. I think Victor Hedman, we will send him to the trade pile right now. Um, I did end up pulling um, this Patrick Hamrila. Hamrila? Uh, one of these next-gen cards. I wonder if there's a possibility. I, you know what? I could throw it in my lineup and play some games just to get the uh, next-gen um, collectibles. Um, but you can see this Anze Kopitar. We pulled him early. He was here for a while. No longer part of the lineup. Brian Campbell was one of our pre-order rewards. Uh, he's not, not part of the team anymore. He's just chilling here. But a lot of our cards are untradeable. Same thing with this untradeable Demko, which I'm not going to end up using. Gary Meehan, fantastic card, but eventually, you know, his time had come. Uh, Drew Doughty, he doesn't go for much on the market. I know that for a fact. I've looked. Grace Zumwinkle was a solid tradable card that got us applesauce. Uh, and then this Quinn Hughes, we took the shot on getting one of the Hughes brothers, ended up only getting Quinn instead of that really sick Jack Hughes when those two played earlier in the season, that Jack Hughes where he just went up like six overalls or something was absolutely insane. And I was trying to go for that one, but you guys can see here, nothing too special in the club. Just a lot of Dylan Cousins who just got a massive contract extension. Um, so you guys can see maybe some of these tradable cards I want to move on from uh, and just sell them for a couple K here or there. Uh, but I kind of want to leave them in the in the club for sets. I don't know. I feel like I get one or two K for them. I don't know how many tradable, um, how many tradable of those low cards we have. Right? We'll take a look at it here. Uh, but I don't know if it's even worth uh, trading them. So let's take a look at tradable. You guys can see we don't have a lot of tradable cards. Just Fox Ward, Bartzell, Markstrom, Dunn. Uh, but then Dowdy, Zumwinkle, Shabbat, Kuznetsov. We're actually uh, we actually have a duplicate. So we can probably end up selling him, but it's going to be what? Like 1K, 2K? Uh, Lenner, Meyer, Nylander, Turnbull. Two cousins are tradable. Like all these 81s and stuff are tradable. I just don't know if I'm going to get too many. We only have 95 tradable golds, and I really don't think anybody's going to actually. It's not even gold. Uh, let's just see minimum overall of an 80. And then 99. So how many 80 plus tradables? We have 31, obviously. Uh, what is that? Five of them here are being used. So we've got 26 that we could move on from. And they're really not that highly rated cards. I mean, there's this Jackson Berezowski. I could put him in and, and, and see what he gets. But again, at the end of the day, like none of these cards are going for more than probably uh, darn near close to quick sell of 900 coins. I don't want to quick sell them or I don't want to, you know, uh, maybe I should put them up for a thousand coins, right? Because that's 25K. But the fact that it's only 25K makes me think that they're more valuable for sets. I don't know. You know, we can take a look at the next gen sets here too, because that's probably one that I want to do a lot of. Um, you guys can see for the collectible sets, we have we do have two collectibles, but it would take like 15 um, uh, uh, just golds. I think I think the best value is probably 82s uh, again, uh, or it would take three it would take three 83s or seven 82s. So doing the 82 to 83 upgrade set, I think technically makes sense here. Actually, no, it doesn't because it's four to get an 83. Yeah, I think I think that's how it works. So actually, the 82s might still be the best value. Although 81s, 881s, we have that, right? We saw we got a bunch of 81s uh, in the club um, just looking at tradables. But I'm hoping, I'm hoping, hoping, hoping they end up dropping a... 
um, an Owen Power, because th that would just make me so much, so happy and so much fun and reason to play. Uh, but let's go ahead and actually let's do a set. I, I, I got my re-roll set. Um, why not? Just see what we can do live here talking to you guys, just kind of breaking down the team, but I'm not really sure where to go next. That's the problem. I feel kind of stuck, like there's no end goal for me. I'm just kind of playing games ad nauseum just to play games. Now, I kind of understand that, you know, I could just play Chell to play Chell, but I want something to work towards, and I don't feel like I have that right now. Um, I could try and work towards Lemieux or Gretzky or something like that, but, you know, we'll see. Uh, and we're not going to pull anything from this. I just figured I might as well try it. And maybe, maybe you, you guys would give me some luck, but, uh, you guys clearly didn't hit the like button enough. Um, <clears throat> but maybe we move on for like a Gretzky or something like that. Or I think I'd rather have Lemieux, uh, than Gretzky. But as you guys can see, it would take 75 to just start off with a power up collective, uh, power up icon choice pack. We can see if we get lucky, we have 44 collectibles right now. So it's going to take a little while, uh, to get there. Um, the power up icon set. I don't know if you guys have a, a smart straight up way to try and uh, get some kind of uh, icon. I don't have enough of these base icons. Obviously, I, I I have got like six, five. Yeah, I got five. I just pulled one more today. Uh, Claude Lemieux, I just pulled the day out of uh, one of my rerolls. But I need 55 more. That's going to be super duper expensive. And nobody said that getting Lemieux or Gretzky would be cheap. Um, but I just, I know there's a way to build up from here via the 84s, 85s, 86s. Maybe we upgrade Blake. I don't know. Maybe I pick up some 84s, uh, and we just kind of work our way up the ladder here, right? An 84 or, or upgrade him to an 85 by two more 85s or, you know, something like that. Upgrade him to an 86 by two more 86s, something like that, right? Um, we, we, we'll see. Obviously you guys in the comment section are generally smarter than I am about this whole stuff. Uh, there's also the X Factor stuff. You know, we could turn uh, 80 plus players into a power up collectible or 40 players into a power up collectible. I may end up doing that just so I can get Larkin up to a an 89. I think it would be. Um, I just need the one more. Right. So um, let's go ahead and take a look at the stats now for our team. So let's take a look at our team and just show you who has been uh, the best players on the team. Obviously, it's this Debrinkat with 210 games played in 136. He hasn't spent a minute out of my lineup. He's a plus 57. He's a phenomenal player when he's there. And I'm surprised to see Zibanejad being our, although I'm not all that surprised because there's been so much turnover with the team. I'm not surprised to see Zibanejad be the second highest scorer, although I kind of am. Maybe, maybe it's worth upgrading him, but at this point of the year, I don't think so. He was a beast, though, when I first picked him up. This Terra Vinen is almost a point per game, almost um, at 51 in 61. That's phenomenal. Dylan Larkin here, you can see as we've been upgrading him, 49 and 66, and it's only getting better from here. He's getting multi-point games. Um, you can see Nino Niederreiter, 39 and 53, and then Connor McDavid here with 30 and 28. So our only point per game player, Latang, Makar. McKinnon's got 13 and 23. Uh, Fox has got 12. Fiala's got 10. Ward has 9. And then Nils Nilsson's honestly got 7. So he's been a really good card. I really, really enjoyed this Nilsson card. Like I said, he's not the kind of guy that's going to wow you. Uh, but the fact that he's 88, 90, 90, 89, 90, like that is the perfect kind of second line center in my mind. Uh, and the kind of guy that I can play all the time. Patrick Kane has played one game for us. It was a uh, squad battles game. I forgot squad battles counted. Um, but there you can see Vince Dunn is also in the lineup now as well. Take a look at the goalies. Uh, and Markstrom with a 2.20 goal against average. It went up recently. I'd kind of got... Uh, shelled a little bit over the weekend in a couple games, but he's 20 and 8, 2.20 goal against average, and an 8, uh, 82 53 save percentage, which is not great, but you know, obviously it's hot, it's a little different. Um, but the 2.20 goal against average is really what I do look for. You can see my overall record is 125, 73, and 13, so solid record. How many games is that? That's 86 plus 125 would be 191, I think it is. 191 games played, so we've almost played 200 games. I haven't even played 200. Um, although, you'd have to think, that must be my online record because Debrinkat has 210 games played. So, almost 200 online games, but you can see our logo still rocking the Sabres. I decided to use the Toledo Walleye home jersey because light blue is my favorite color, hence the channel logo. And I also like the, the purple and orange uh, Royals jersey there, so I, I'm pretty happy with it. Also, if you guys didn't know, you can push Y in the My Team screen to delete your team if you're just... You know, just done with hot and don't want the temptation to come back. So maybe you guys use that. But 
I think right now we just kind of wait for Friday when we open the rewards after 5 p.m. Um, to see if there's going to be an Owen power in, in, in these sets. See if we pull a, a next gen card. Um, but right now, I, like I can't, I'm not going to get any of the team builders done. I'm way too far away from that. We don't have enough players in the club even. Um, you guys can see here the Niedermeyer, Chelios, and Blake um, through seasonal collectible trade-in sets. Um, what sets are these? Oh, are those the special ones? Uh, that was, a, that was like a choice pack, right? Or a choice, whatever, uh, you had to choose from, yeah, there it is. The 60 season collectibles last season. I don't know. Th they, apparently they're not doing that this season, I guess. Um, yeah, it looks like it's just power up collectible for 36, the jumbo elite. Yeah. It's just regular packs from here on in. So no, uh, none of those, uh, fancy icons, but I do think the icons are where I want to go next. Unless you guys have a better idea. Um, obviously, like I said, the team builder sets, we're way too far away from even being close. I mean, even being close to any of these. Um, so I just don't think it's worthwhile. I know that Yager just came out and it looks sick. He looks sick. Um, but yeah, it's just one of those that I don't think I'm going to be able to get up there. I just don't have the cash stack. I don't have the rewards and I don't have the, the collection. So, but that is just going to be the end of this state of the team address, I guess, state of the state of the bread uh, address. But thank you guys for uh, for listening and, and watching and enjoying this. And if you did leave a like, uh, make sure to let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. I do want to know where you guys want to see this series go next. I feel like I'm beating my head against a wall, just playing champs every weekend, just trying to pull whatever card is out there. I feel like I want to work towards something. So if you guys have a suggestion or a goal you want to see me achieve, I'm going to do my best to achieve it before the end of the year. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see some more and I will see you guys in the next one. It's a free for all, free for all, what we fall. It's a free for all, free for all. For